Bovine trichomoniasis is a costly disease to cattle producers. Over half of the states in the U.S. have adopted control programs in attempt to prevent the spread of the disease in cattle populations. This presentation was developed by the Mississippi State University College of Veterinary Medicine for the Mississippi Bovine Trichomoniasis Certification Program for Practitioners under the Mississippi Board of Animal Health. My name is Dr. Carla Houston, Beef Extension Veterinarian with the Mississippi State University College of Veterinary Medicine. This presentation consists of a brief review of trichomoniasis in cattle, instructions with video on how to properly collect and ship samples for diagnostic testing, and a test to meet veterinary certification requirements for submission under the Mississippi Board of Animal Health Trichomoniasis Control Program. You must get all of the test certification questions correct in order to obtain certification. Trichomoniasis is caused by the unicellular protozoan Tritrichomonas fetus. It can be found worldwide in cattle and other domestic animals. The disease is found in both beef and dairy cattle across the United States. Tritrichomoniasis in cattle is a venereal disease spread between animals through sexual contact. The organism does not survive well outside of the animal. Infection with trichomoniasis mainly causes early embryonic loss in cows, which leads to an increased calving interval and decreased calf crop. Cows will typically clear the infection within two to four months. The immunity in cows is estimated to last approximately six to 12 months, after which time they can become reinfected. Carrier cows may also result from infection where a healthy fetus is carried to term. Bulls typically become asymptomatic carriers. The organism lives deep in the prepucial crypts. These folds become deeper as a bull ages, so infection tends to be more persistent in the older bulls. Younger bulls can get infected but are not as likely to become chronically infected. Therefore, herd diagnosis of trichomoniasis is typically focused on the bull battery. Because there are no outward signs in infected bulls, diagnosis of trichomoniasis in cattle can be quite challenging. Oftentimes, suspicion of trichomoniasis begins with a history of poor reproductive rates as discussed in the previous slide. What a producer might see is a return to estrus in cows known to be bred or a prolonged calving season. Diagnostic methods to identify trichomoniasis include direct microscopic identification of the organism, direct microscopic identification of the organism following culture, and molecular-based assays such as PCR. The organism lives in the prepucial mucosa. Therefore, diagnostic tests for bulls are performed on samples taken from either prepucial washes or prepucial scrapings. Culture and PCR are used most commonly to diagnose trichomoniasis. Culture and PCR both have reported sensitivity of 65 to 96 percent and a sensitivity of 96 to 98 percent. Depending on the state, official trichomoniasis testing protocols must be followed and veterinarians should check with the state of destination when performing trick testing for interstate shipping. For example, Mississippi requires one negative PCR or three negative cultures. There are many factors known to contribute to the inaccuracy of diagnostic testing, such as the method of sample collection, the type of transport medium used, transport time and temperature, and incubation conditions. These are all factors that can be controlled or influenced by the veterinarian during collection. The failure to identify trick organisms in a positive animal can be detrimental since the presence of an infected animal in a herd allows infection to propagate. Reasons for false negative test results include failure to collect the organism from the prepuce, improper sample handling, degradation of DNA, presence of excess blood in the collected sample, and interference or cross-reactivity with the natural flora of the animal. False positives can also be economically harmful as these animals may be subject to unnecessary and often expensive repercussions such as retesting, quarantine and isolation, and even removal from the herd. The presence of fecal trichomonads, as well as cross-contamination of samples, can lead to false positive results. There are no approved treatment options for infected bulls. 
Infected cows will clear the infection follow several months of sexual rest. In a herd that has confirmed trichomoniasis, several control methods will help reduce the incidence of disease. Test all bulls and cull positive bulls upon confirmation. Decrease bull numbers if possible. Use younger bulls and decrease average bull age. Shorten the breeding season so that problems can be detected sooner through pregnancy checking. Culture all pyometras in cows and submit aborted fetuses and placentas in order to detect or rule out disease. Consider using a vaccination on cows if clinical signs remain high, and this can be determined on a case-by-case -case basis. Emphasize to your clients that if they don't have trichomoniasis, they don't want it. Prevention is the key to having a healthy herd. Some disease prevention techniques include testing and culling, utilizing artificial insemination whenever possible, use only virgin replacement bulls, maintain a young bull battery, control animal movement which includes keeping fences repaired, avoid public and shared lands as much as possible at least during the breeding season, maintain separate herds by age, group, bull battery, etc., and immunization of cows under certain circumstances, although vaccination is only labeled to reduce losses in cows and will not actually prevent infection. Its use has had questionable effects. Over half of the states in the U.S. have regulations concerning trichomoniasis testing, and these regulations are frequently changing. The regulations will vary by state, so it's important to check the state of destination for the specific requirements when testing bulls for interstate movement. Individual state information can be found by contacting the Office of the State Animal Health Official or State Veterinarian. A listing of these can be found on the USDA website, the U.S. Animal Health Association website, or the interstatelivestock.com website. Regardless of state, all breeding animals moving interstate must have permanent animal identification or official animal ID. Trichomoniasis is a reportable disease in Mississippi. Entry requirements for bulls coming into the state of Mississippi are as follows. A negative test, which is three cultures or one PCR, is required for all bulls over 18 months of age, except rodeo or exhibition animals. Virgin bulls under 18 months of age must be accompanied by a statement written directly on the CVI or Certificate of Veterinary Inspection that states that the animal is under 18 months of age and has not been with any breeding females. Test results are good for 60 days. No positive bulls are to be admitted to the state except to go directly for slaughter. An emergency change of ownership rule on bovine trichomoniasis was mandated by the Mississippi Board of Animal Health effective April 1, 2020. Every bull that is sold, exchanged, leased, or transferred in ownership within the state of Mississippi shall be accompanied by either a valid negative trichomoniasis test result within 90 days or a signed virgin bull statement for bulls less than 18 months of age that they have never been with breeding females. Bulls coming into a stockyard without a virgin bull statement or valid negative trick test must be consigned to slaughter. Bulls can be purchased from the slaughter pen and be trick tested by the stockyard veterinarian on the day of the sale, but they must be quarantined pending a negative test. All samples to be submitted for testing must be collected by a certified accredited veterinarian, meaning that the veterinarian has gone through the Mississippi Certification Program. Official testing of samples must be performed at an official veterinary diagnostic laboratory or a laboratory approved by the state veterinarian. Again, three separate culture tests, each conducted not less than one week apart or one PCR test must be performed. In Mississippi, pulling of up to five samples is allowed, but the pulling must be done at the laboratory and not on farm or on site during collection. Next, we'll discuss the proper collection technique in the bull. Materials needed for testing should be collected in advance, including scissors, permanent marker for sample identification, 
disposable gloves, sterile saline without antibiotics or other preservatives that could interfere with diagnostic testing, a sterile sheathed pipette, 26 to 30 inches long. You can also use a smaller pipette in younger bulls, but a standard infusion pipette is not long enough to reach the fornix of mature bulls. There are also some specialized pipettes that have been developed for sample collection, thought to be less traumatic and a little more efficient in collecting the smegma. However, there are no published reports or studies of either of these specialized pipettes obtaining a more diagnostic sample than a simple infusion pipette. Two of these frequently used include the Trickett pipette and the Pizzle stick, shown here. You will also need a sterile 12cc syringe or sterile rubber bulb, a disinfectant solution such as chlorhexidine or betadine, and transport media in a pouch or sterile tube. Concerning the transport media, you should only use the pouch or tube containing the proper trick media. The most commonly used media is the fully enclosed pouch system, which contains media appropriate for collection, transport, and culture. The pouches can be used for either culture or PCR. Tubes containing the trick media are preferred for PCR or pooling of samples because they can be processed with less handling than the pouch but the tubes are not recommended for use when performing culture. You can also inoculate your sample into a sterile tube with the appropriate media. Regardless of the media used, make sure that pouches or tubes containing the media are not expired. Using permanent marker, record the date and time of collection and official animal ID. Animals should be sexually rested for at least seven days prior to testing. A good technique is important to get a clean, valid sample. All samples should be collected in as clean a matter as possible as fecal matter and blood can interfere with your test results. Change gloves between animals to avoid cross-contamination. This is especially important when PCR is used. Proper restraint of the bull is important. Trim the hair from the end of the sheath. Dry off the sheath with a paper towel. Wipe off your scissors, place them in disinfectant to avoid contamination and cross-contamination. If there's a large amount of gross contamination, or if the wet technique is used, the sheath can be flushed with a 60cc syringe and physiologic saline. Use a new 12cc syringe attached to a guarded pipette to produce a vacuum. Keep the pipette guarded with plastic sheath until insertion to prevent contamination. Hard plastic pipette sheaths should be loosened apart before use. To scrape the prepuce, insert the pipette into the prepuce to the area just before the fornix. Apply steady negative pressure, use 25 to 30 brisk strokes, and reduce your vacuum as you remove the pipette from the sheath. Regardless of the type of pipette used for sample collection, it's important to scrape along the penis at the mid-shaft to the caudal aspect of the free portion of the penis to the area just before the fornix to increase the likelihood of identifying the positive bull. Don't be too vigorous or aggressive during collection as a large amount of blood can interfere with the test. A small amount of blood is acceptable. Be careful to avoid prepucial injuries, which can result in infections or even abscess formation. The dry technique is preferred over the wet technique. With the dry technique, you use vigorous strokes while applying suction. With the wet technique, the prepuce is flushed with saline prior to scraping, and you draw up fluid while scraping and apply negative pressure. Collected samples should be opaque from smegma, without a large amount of blood. The sample should contain approximately 1 to 2 mLs of smegma. Inoculate into the upper part of the pouch or into the tube as directed by the manufacturer. Then aspirate several times to completely inoculate the smegma into the container. This may take 3 or 4 aspirations. Seal the pouch or tube properly. If using a pouch, do not use tape or staples on the pouch. If using the tube, make sure the cap is replaced securely. 
While recommended techniques may vary slightly from laboratory to laboratory, veterinarians can view the general collection procedures in a video hosted by Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Laboratory, which will be shown here. Similar to all diagnostic testing, when testing bulls for Trichrichomonas fetus, receiving accurate results is crucial. The only way to ensure accurate results is to follow correct sampling and shipping procedures. This video will introduce you to the proper methods for collecting and submitting samples to the diagnostic laboratory. The materials needed for successful trick sampling include a 12cc syringe, a guarded sterile infusion pipette, a pair of scissors, disposable gloves, a 60cc syringe, saline, disinfectant, a permanent marker, an in-pouch TF media pouch, paper towels, and a container for holding inoculated pouches. Proper restraint of the bowl is necessary. Clip the hair from the end of the sheath. Make sure the scissors are clean and disinfected between each bowl. If there is gross contamination of the prepucial pouch, rinse the area using a 60cc syringe and physiologic saline. Use a new set of gloves for each bowl to prevent cross-contamination. To collect, attach the 12cc syringe to the guarded sterile pipette. Insert the pipette into the sheath until the end of the pipette is about 6 to 8 inches from the fornix. At this location, push the pipette through the pipette guard. Now, apply constant negative pressure on the syringe and scrape the pipette against the penis and prepuce approximately 15 to 20 times. Use your free hand to guide the pipette end to assure proper sample collection and protect the bowl from injury. Then remove the pipette. A properly collected sample will contain approximately one and a half to two mLs of schmegma. If an insufficient sample amount is collected, start the collection procedure over with a new pipette and gloves. Schmegma samples that contain a small amount of blood are acceptable. Refrain from using extremely vigorous collection procedures as this may result in injury to the penis or prepuce and or large amount of blood which may interfere with the test results. The only acceptable collection media is the in-pouch TF. It is important to make sure the expiration date on the pouch is valid before use. This date can be found on the lower left corner of the pouch. Tear the plastic strip from the top of the pouch. Insert the pipette into the upper pouch compartment. Using the syringe, aspirate the collection media into the pipette several times to remove the schmegma. Following inoculation of the pouch, discard the pipette and syringe. Now fold the pouch over several times to force the fluid from the upper compartment into the lower compartment. Seal the pouch using the white tabs. Please do not use tape or staples to seal the pouch. It is critical to record the bull's identification number, the date of collection, and the veterinarian's name with permanent marker. Do not make marks on the clear areas of the pouch. It is very important to keep the inoculated pouches between 59 degrees Fahrenheit and 100 degrees Fahrenheit from the time of collection until arrival at the diagnostic laboratory. The shipment of trick pouches falls under the category B infectious substance guidelines set forth by the Department of Transportation. These requirements include shipping specimens in a triple packaging manner. First, the trick pouches must be placed in a secondary container such as screw top plastic container or plastic bag. Additionally, these secondary containers must contain absorbent material such as paper towels to absorb any material that may leak from the pouches during transit. The secondary container then should be placed in a rigid container with additional material added to provide cushioning and to protect against extreme temperatures. Do not ship trick pouches on ice. Make sure the bowl IDs on the pouches match the IDs on the submission form. Two types of laboratory tests are available, culture and PCR. We routinely follow a positive culture with a confirmatory PCR. 
Mark the appropriate test that you want performed on the submission form. Place the submission form in a Ziploc bag and place on top of the packing material under the lid of the outside shipping container or carton before sealing for transit. It is important that inoculated pouches are received by the laboratory within 48 hours after collection if requesting culture and 72 hours if requesting PCR. Again, make sure the inoculated pouches are kept between 59 degrees Fahrenheit and 100 degrees Fahrenheit before and during shipment. Do not ship pouches on ice. By following the guidelines presented in this video, you will be assured of receiving valid Tritrichomonas test results. Note that since this video was recorded, the special tubes containing trick media have been developed and also can be used when samples are submitted for PCR or for pooling. Once samples are taken, proper storage and shipping conditions are critical for the best test result. Store the sample in the upright position. If pooling, submit samples individually and the lab will do the pooling. Ensure that the container will not leak. After collection, protect the sample from extreme weather conditions between 68 and 110 degrees Fahrenheit. An ice pack can be used in extremely hot conditions, but do not allow them to be in direct contact with your pouch or tubes in the shipping container. A cooler or other insulated container can be used in extremely cold conditions. Ship samples according to the Department of Transportation guidelines for Category B infectious agents with triple containment. Pack the sample with absorbent material such as a paper towel and place in a resealable bag such as a Ziploc with an insulated box. Don't forget the paperwork. Be sure to indicate whether you're requesting PCR or culture. Samples should arrive at the diagnostic lab within 48 hours of collection. Samples should be shipped overnight and do not ship samples over the weekend or over holidays. If this is not possible, samples can be incubated at 96.8 to 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or 36 to 38 degrees Celsius for up to 48 hours at the veterinarian's facility. Incubated samples should arrive no later than 120 hours after collection. Be sure to inform the lab that samples have already been incubated and for how long they were incubated prior to shipping. Do not ship samples directly on ice. Submission forms can be obtained from the Mississippi Veterinary Research and Diagnostic Laboratory website or by calling 601-420-4700. Veterinarians must be Category 2 USDA accredited in the state of Mississippi before they can be certified to perform trichomoniasis testing in Mississippi. Only veterinarians registered with the Mississippi Board of Animal Health are permitted to take and submit official samples for trichomoniasis testing. Certification consists of viewing of this presentation or attendance at an approved trichomoniasis training program and completion of the certification test. The test consists of 12 questions. A score of 100% is required to fulfill the certification test requirements. Should a veterinarian fail to pass the test, a Mississippi Board of Animal Health representative will be in contact with them in order to become certified and go over the correct answers. Veterinarians should print out the test, answer the questions, sign the application form, and send the test and application back to the Mississippi Board of Animal Health. A TRIC certificate will be awarded following receipt of the test and application. Certification is good for five years. During this time, veterinarians will be able to collect and submit official trichomoniasis tests to the Mississippi Veterinary Research and Diagnostic Laboratory or other approved laboratory for testing. At the end of this presentation, you will be directed to the Mississippi Board of Animal Health website where you can download the certification test and application. The address to mail your completed test and application is as follows. Dr. Nancy Jackson, Mississippi Board of Animal Health, P.O. Box 3889, Jackson, Mississippi 39207. The email address is nancy at mdac.ms.gov.
This concludes the bovine trichomoniasis certification program for practitioners. Once received, please keep copies of your certificates which are good for a period of five years. If you have any questions or require additional assistance, please contact Dr. Nancy Jackson at the Mississippi Board of Animal Health at 601-359-1170 or Dr. Carla Houston at the College of Veterinary Medicine at 662-325-1183. The full requirements of the Mississippi Trichomoniasis Program can also be found online at www.mbah.state.ms.us backslash regulations. Thank you for your interest and involvement in the Mississippi Trichomoniasis Program.